Hello everybody and welcome to our celebration of Mass on the Solemnity of the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul. I'm offering Mass today for Dan Miller and his family. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us turn to our Lord who loves us so much and ask him to forgive our sins and help us to be better. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Herod started to persecute certain members of the church. He beheaded James, the brother of John. And when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he decided to arrest Peter as well. This was during the days of unleavened bread and he put Peter in prison, assigning four squads of four soldiers each to guard him in town. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of Passover week. All the time Peter was under guard, the church prayed to God for him, unremittingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept their watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood there, and the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said, hurry, and the chains fell from his hand. The angel then said, put on your belt and sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, Wrap your cloak round you and follow me. Peter followed him, but had no idea that what the angel did and was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guard posts, one after the other, and reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord. They went through it and had walked the whole length of one street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it is all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel and save me from heaven and from all that the Jewish people were so certain would happen to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response only at Psalm, the response is, from all my terrors, the Lord set me free. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. 
and the Lord my soul shall make it boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. From all my terrors the Lord set me free. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. From all my terrors the Lord set me free. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. From all my terrors the Lord set me free. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. My life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All that is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me power, so that through me the whole message might be proclaimed for all the pagans to hear. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from all the evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the old world could never hold out against it. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now a prayer for all those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the coronavirus that has claimed lives and affected so many people. We pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and the cause of this virus and of stemming the tide of its transmission. 
Guide the hands and minds of doctors, nurses, medical staff, experts and all healthcare workers that they may minister to the sick with love, compassion and skill. We pray for all those who have died from COVID-19 and for their families and friends. May the Lord bring them to the glory of heaven. We pray for all who are ill from the virus that the Lord may heal them soon through the ministry of others. We pray for all who work in any way at this time to help our society function, those who are involved with producing, selling and delivering food, those who keep our transport systems and utilities going, and all those in other frontline jobs. We pray for all who are struggling with isolation, loneliness, depression and financial problems. Give us all the grace to deepen our trust in you, O Lord, and so support each other in every way we can. And now let us place before the Lord our own personal intentions. And we commend these and all our prayers to the intercession of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the prayer of the Apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith, Paul its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world they share one martyr's crown. And therefore with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Mark our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the Church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the Apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's just a, an announcement to make about um, 
Dan's funeral. Um, Dan's funeral is taking place this coming Thursday, the 2nd of July, at 2 o'clock in Blake and Crematorium, but the numbers are restricted to 20 because of the COVID guidelines. But the suggestion is that we gather outside Our Lady and St. John's to pay our last respects as Dan's coffin will be coming in the hearse and stopping briefly outside the church round about one o'clock. So that's one o'clock on Thursday. And can I just say thank you to John for sending in today's readings. Thank you to Veronica for, for doing the flowers and thank you to the choir for providing our final hymn. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life, and may you all have a very good Sunday.